Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with the latest and greatest Mr. Informal podcast. We are on the Mr. Informal podcast 149. Yes, you've heard that right. I go by the name of Mr. Informal. So, I hope you are safe. I hope you are being cautious. Certainly, I hope you are healthy because you we, are, we will all need it, especially at this time month and certainly season but spring is coming well and certainly summer is coming i cannot wait we all can't wait we all need a bit of vacation going out uh enjoying the sun enjoying the fresh flowers certainly so before we get into the mr formal podcast please do not forget to add me on instagram M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L and then check out my website mrinformal.com M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com So what is going on with the podcast 149? These are the four topics. Well, Li Ning uh, performance uh, company uh, that makes shoes, mostly shoes, is rising. Number three, mobile wallet will also rise in the future. Number three, uh, it's still not over. We still have port congestions. Not only that, we have backlogs. Not only that, there are even Christmas items that were supposed to be sold off in December 2020, but was not released at a port. Last but not least, video learning. Well, we're not going to learn a lot from video learning. I think this is why... Uh, all these internet classes, I feel as though they're not uh, they're not useful. So those are the four topics for this podcast. And so let's go ahead and start the podcast. So topic number one, Li Ning from HighBeast.com. Li Ning revenue uh, rises despite decline in offline sales. Interesting. So. Chinese sportswear brand Li Ning announced its annual financial results uh, for 2020, noting revenue increase of 4.2% year on year with a $2.2 billion it announced on Friday. The company said that despite the challenges brought by the China virus, it remained profitable, reporting a net profit of 13.3%. Still, the company uh, noted the impact of the China virus led to a challenging retail environment during most of the year. The company saw a 9.7% drop in sales revenue from its directly operated brick and mortar locations. Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. During the, uh, ju- during the pandemic, the group has stepped up the efforts to transform offline traffic to online sales, improving efficiency of online channels contributing to a growth in revenue 29.9 percent from the e-commerce channel so uh, this reminds me so much of under armor the company but under armor is certainly much bigger and it has a a worldwide footprint than li ning but nonetheless uh, shout out to li ning for actually uh, rising during this uh, pandemic so li ning uh, li ning is not new uh, in terms of sportswear Brands such as Nike, leaning. Uh, I've heard of leaning. Uh, I think th- mid 2000, 2006, 2007 around there. They were quite young. Uh, again, it reminds me of so much Under Armour. And you see, leaning never really had a higher worldwide footprint. Even though some of the National Basketball Association players are sponsored or have contracts with leaning. And certainly Dwayne Wade is one of them. I think CJ McCollum is also another player. Uh, maybe Clay Thompson. I bet no. I think Clay Thompson is with Anta. But in any case, they do have some contract players under their brand. Uh, I think they are certainly rising. They are probably the premier. They are basically the Nike of China. If I'm gonna do it that way now. Certainly, Li Ning is nowhere near as big as China, but if more Chinese uh, people start to pay attention with Li Ning, certainly 
uh, they will uh, be as big as China but I think Chinese people are just for Nike over Li Ning because Nike is has brand equity brand awareness huge huge uh, following but nonetheless now Li Ning operated it's uh, mostly operated online certainly and so that is great now in terms of their customers I know that they have some customers all over the world and so I am glad and certainly I am glad that they are rising we need more competition in sportswear other than certainly Nike and Adidas I know Reebok is there hopefully Under Armour can back can go back to its feet can come back up not just sign a Stephen Curry because we need more Under Armour because I think Under Armour has great potential but certainly Under Armour is not stepping up but at the same time lean leaning is probably going to need more contract players to have my brand equity better marketing certainly and um, just much better product I mean I don't know what what's taking them so long to build the product build the brand to a, a higher degree uh, actually have a better brand awareness uh, hopefully they can keep going um, I won't be surprised if they do uh, suddenly become the number three uh, in terms of sportswear brand probably taking out Under Armour uh, hopefully that happens and again the more uh, competition there are in sportswear the better so uh, second topic second topic from retaildive.com titled mobile wallet industry to reach 3.5 trillion dollars by 2023 per report so a new report for uh, a new report from Finaria a finance and investment company estimate that mobile wallet industry will grow to 2.4 trillion dollars this year a 24% rise from last year a report forecast that market will grow to 3.5 trillion in value by 2023 the average value for mobile point-of-sale transaction is 1670 by 2021 a 25% bump compared to 2019 the Asian country especially China are leading the way in mobile payments the US mobile payments market is the second largest at $465 uh, 465 billion dollars I'm sorry about that a transaction the US market slightly slated to grow to by 49% to 690 billion dollars by 2023 according to report Finaria reports that Apple Pay Google Wallet and WeChat and Alipay are the forefront of the mobile mark uh, payment market the report states that Chinese infrastructure facilitated by the rapid growth adoption of mobile payments so me personally I'm 50 50 with mobile payments I'd rather pay with cash or I'd rather pay with credit card but certainly in the end I'd rather pay cash now why do I say 50 50 because I don't like it when government or some type of institution know what kind of transaction I am paying any type of payments I want privacy that's just it now you call you may say that I'm a privacy nut but hey if the government finds out the kind of money that you're moving the mobile payment they will tax you they can probably tax mobile payment don't be surprised if you use if you get taxed by mobile payment and China might even do that you know all these uh, mobile transaction they're gonna find out if you're doing some money laundering you're you're doing tax evasion I mean this is why we do have blockchains but there are also uh, uh the government is also hiring people to unlock blockchains so in the end they will find out who's doing the transaction who's moving the money how much money you're moving how much money you have in your account so and so and so i mean this is why i rather pay cash for because of just being anonymous and but look 
I, I know there's more and more people are using mobile payments, uh, mobile wallets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, certainly, uh, with the rise of Bitcoins and other cryptocurrency out there, there will be a lot more mobile payments or PayPal, uh, Venmo, you know, Zelle, other types of fintech or payment apps out there are going to be used. But again, I don't use that a lot because, again, I like to have some privacy. I don't want anybody to know the kind of money I'm moving, I'm paying for what. And and so on and you know and again government no matter what you do government will tax you and don't be surprised if the CCP or the Chinese government also will um, certainly acquire your data uh, you know just for the sake and they want to know who's who and again I don't want that to happen uh, I feel as though not only that the machines that these stores are using the brands are not even there yet in terms of user friendly, in terms of actual stable connection. And so we'll see how that goes. The technology right now is still um, unstable. I'm not saying it's not doing its day. I'm saying it's, it's still unstable uh, because whether it be Bluetooth, Wi-Fi or some type of radar detection, some uh, hardware can still be unstable. But certainly, I'm not surprised that it is rising, but I, I, I would be wary of it because there are always hackers out there that could get your uh, payments to the wrong hands. On to the third topic. <clears throat> now, this is, has been going on in the news. There's so many articles of it, but there's still some port congestions. Port traffic, port problems, too many stuff at the port. There are even Christmas items that are still stuck in the port. Christmas item that was supposed to be sold in December 2020, but it was never released to the port because there's just too many backlogs, too many stuff to unload. I'm not gonna cite any article because again, there's so many news out there about this. Now, ever since the China virus, this pandemic going on, the port just been congested. Not enough workers, not enough ships, not enough um, truckers. There's a lot of logistics problems, certainly a lot of, uh, you, basically a, a lot of problems. So basically the items that you were hoping for to see, I mean, no, no, I shouldn't say that. The quantities that you are hoping to see on time are not being delivered on time are not being presented on time not only that it's actually a lot of politics at the port you know who pays the most can we release this you know a lot of backdoor shenanigans backdoor deals a lot of legal backdoor deals happening at the port right now because there are uh brands out there that want their stuff to get released and they will pay no matter what no matter how high just to get it released so there's there's a lot of backdoor shenanigans out there and i'm pretty sure the workers there are complaining um i don't think they should complain because well look i mean it is what it is you have a pandemic not only that i'm pretty sure you probably the company probably reduced the amount of people to avoid the spread so you can't really complain and there better not be any some type of protest or riots or union about it because again, it is what it is. Now, some companies are, instead of going to a main port, they're probably sending that ship to a different port, which eases up on port congestion, which is a pretty good idea. Um, certainly, I'm sure the smaller ports are also gotten, gotten busy because the main ports or the big ports are getting congested, uh, having a lot of traffic. So it's a really great, idea to spread around to spread it around now certainly there's gonna be a time in the future where it's gonna go back to normal where everything should be on time and must be on time as of right now the items that you're waiting for is still probably stuck in the port not only that I'm sh uh, there was a uh, recent news that Foot Locker was uh, saying that they missed the, the revenue because there were still items uh, that was stuck in the port or they couldn't get the items on time. Well, 
Well, that's your fault, Blocker. You should have planned ahead. Plan, plan way ahead. But, ah. Uh, the port right now is quite busy, especially if you live in a big port, just like a, like a Beijing port, Taiwan port. Taiwan port is certainly busy, but it's certainly uh, getting better. I'm not saying it's uh, worse than before, but as the pandemic starts to wind down, the port is starting to relax more, starting to uh, process much faster and load much faster. So on to the last topic, video learning, Zoom learning, uh, Microsoft Teams learning, uh, internet learning, by video. You know, there's only a few times where I actually learn something in a video. It could be um, an instruction video, it could be uh, learn how to cook, uh, could learn how to maybe build something. Uh, instead of watching, uh, reading a manual, reading a actual you know video to do something but schools schools have been really hit hard but you know who has been the hardest is students honestly I don't think students are learning much from these so-called video conferences or video classes it has been um, in I'm not gonna cite sources but it's basically everywhere that in the news in tweets, in Facebook, in articles that students are not learning as much as they are compared to in-person classes. That's why many of the parents want their kids to go back to school. Also, many of the teachers are finding out that it's really hard to teach students via video. It's really hard. I mean, you don't know what's going on. You don't know who's paying attention. Let's be honest. You don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I mean, if I was in college, I know they have these uh, internet class, all that. But I never even took any of that. I really don't. Because I want to go to class. I want to go to a class. I don't want to log in into a class. Because, honestly, I'd rather be in person learning about um, whatever t the teacher is writing on the board, presenting. It's much better because you are paying 100% of your attention to the teacher, to your professor, whoever may be, or you may be your classmate that are uh, making presentation. Certainly, the way you... Um, be successful in life is collaboration, uh, group work, team project, group project, so on. But having isolation learning, whether it be videos, it's, it's really tough to learn. And I'm trying to figure out how do students learn. I mean, they probably learn 25% compared to maybe 90% of what they learn in person. Now, I don't have the percentage. I don't have the analytics. I'm just making a guess here. But... I mean, I have uh, nephews that tells me it's really hard to listen. I mean, it's really hard to be teached by teachers by video because sometimes the connection is bad. It's not clear. Sometimes you just don't pay attention. Um, for the most part, uh, it's really tough. And that's what they all been saying. Uh, so how much do these students actually learn from these video classes um it's that's tough so um i'm not saying that every student's i mean i'm not saying that video learning is is not useful i think that in a certain extent or maybe in a certain class it can be useful but for the majority of it it's not it's not there yet it's not ready Certainly, a lot of these students want to see their friends, want to see their classmates. I mean, it's all part of the social life, all part of the social learning that we all go, we all go through as students when you go to school. And so that basically concludes this uh, podcast 149, Mr. Informal Podcast 149. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something from beginning to end. I hope I gave you some insights. And again, please be healthy, be cautious out there. The pandemic is uh, waning down. 
hopefully we all go back to normal hopefully we can go all go on vacation all of us because we all need a vacation from somewhere other than our houses and again please don't forget to add me on instagram m-i-s-t-e-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l and then check out my website got some great stuff there uh, blog stuff items that i've uh, made um i also have it on sale that's mrinformal.com m-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l.com and so i will see you in the next podcast Bye bye